going to take the north and never give it back. So that's a good pick. You get the corner. I got to go bold. Right? I got to go bold for this. Oh, yeah. She's, She's got some nice long Welcome hair back to goes. the Unbearable Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Barron. Make sure to like and subscribe if you are excited for some training camp coverage because today we are going to be breaking down the first two practices of the Chicago Bears, and we're going to be giving you all the training camp coverage that you have come to know and love from this channel. But man, camp is here. Say it and comment. I I'm excited. I'm super pumped that Bears training camp is here. Even though it's just the private practices first, we just had to kind of scour the web, try and find some information about what is going on. And we've already gotten some film from the Chicago Bears on training camp. And for those that are watching, you can see Tyreek Stevenson making an absolute incredible diving interception against Caleb Williams. And it's nice seeing this. Nice seeing our Bears players out there. Nice seeing everybody getting excited about Tyreek Stevenson, about some of the plays. And trust me, we will talk about the defense and what they're bringing to the table a little bit later on. But you kind of see good throw. Overall, by uh, by Caleb Williams, a little low to DJ Moore. Just an excellent play by Tyreek Stevenson. This play was done in a two-minute drill. But yeah, throws an interception. Not a bad throw. Yeah, right, you're not blaming Caleb Williams necessarily for this throw. But let's get into the actual coverage. Let's start talking as we normally do. I always like to break down the injuries first so we can talk about that. And then I have five takeaways. And for those that are watching and listening... Number three is Caleb Williams breakdown, so you can fast forward to that if you want to, but let's break down the injuries because today, after the second day, I'm recording this on Sunday, after the second day of training camp, we see Gerald Everett coming back. He's no longer on the NFI uh, list. Also, Javin White actually just got signed, the linebacker, um, over to the Chicago Bears now, but also, Roma Dunze was out the first practice because of personal reasons. He is back, but limited Braxton Jones was out last time, but Braxton Jones and TJ Edwards were both limited. Mercedes Lewis, Simba Webster and Noah Sewell also did not practice. That's from Josh Sharrock of NBC sports, Chicago. Also, if anyone's interested from the offensive line perspective, when Braxton Jones was limited, Larry Borum was the primary backup at left tackle. Just something of note for us to, to see because Borum still the primary swing tackle we would expect at that left tackle spot. Amagashi still kind of banged up. Nothing that I saw about, oh yeah, Amagashi still on the NFI list, so still not participating yet, which is a little bit disappointing. But even though that some of the offensive linemen are not participating, I got to say, one big takeaway is the offensive line health. Yet again, some of the banged upness of Braxton Jones and then also Amagaji. But something else, I want to talk about our my first ever stock up player this year. And I wanted to do this just because this guy has gotten so much negative discussions. Like I've talked about him because he didn't play well last year. But Nate Davis, I will say his stock is up, dare I say, because he was a full participant. Not a lot of us were expecting him to even be out there, but Nate Davis was. And it's great because Nate Davis being out there at right guard, it's like, okay, now just keep this going. Keep practicing. Keep You, you look so much better when you were on the Titans. Why did you stink when you came over to the Chicago Bears? So it's good that we are seeing Nate Davis out there. Hopefully this is Hopefully we don't even have to report this, right? And Nate Davis is just consistently out there, consistently practicing. But I wanted to give him a shout out just because he was a big question for us because this opens up the next conversation, which is the center battle. Because that is my number two takeaway is that we are having a competition at center. And I think a lot of this has to do with Nate Davis being healthy. If Nate Davis is healthy, now you can put the true best center at the center position. We said at this show, it seems like the Bears want Ryan Bates to be the center. And it seems like Coleman Shelton is a true center, but wouldn't necessarily play guard. So Ryan Bates is essentially your best backup guard. So what I really like about what they're doing with this is you're giving both centers different snaps. So in the first practice, 
Brian Bates took every snap at starting center. Then today on Sunday, every snap went to Coleman Shelton. So they're going to see what center do they like better out there. They feel convinced that they have two starting center cal- starting caliber centers out there with Ryan Bates and Coleman Shelton. So that's something that we really do want to pay attention to is this center battle because, yet again, if Nate Davis is there, now it is a true battle at center, not having to strategize and say, okay, Ryan Bates is our best backup, right? And now you can just literally have the best player out there. And yet again, all depends on Nate Davis's health. So now the moment everybody's been waiting for, Caleb time. Let's talk about Caleb Williams. Is his stock up? Is his stock down? What am I hearing around the around everywhere about Caleb Williams? Well, I'll tell you this. Stock up. If I had to choose stock up, for Caleb Williams. Keenan Allen talked about this. He mentioned that Caleb Williams is more in control in the huddle than he saw last time in minicamp. And he talked about his just overall confidence that he hears Caleb talking about in the huddle. And a lot of people were talking about this as one of the big things that Caleb just needs to prove is that he can command a huddle. And already early, everything early says yes from Keenan Allen from others, that it's, it seems more put together. And you already like to hear that. But then what else do we know about Caleb Williams? Now, I'm not here to tell you that Caleb Williams is beating the defense and is completely ahead of him, even though I did hear, like, Adam Hogue was kind of saying back and forth, making plays from uh, CHGO. But then also I'm hearing more, like, just other people, like the, the vast majority of people are saying that it does seem like the defense is still ahead of the offense, which you expect it's only the days one and two of training camp. But also, like uh, other sources that I'm, you know, other little pieces, Adam Hoke saying just not a lot of bad that he's seeing when he's attending there. Yet again, CHGO and the Hogan Johns podcast. Um, but then also plays for Caleb. Um, there's also, I think it was Mark Carmen from CHGO that was mentioning he just saw some plays that were more so around Caleb Williams' strengths. Actually, I think it was um, Adam Hogue again with that. But also, um, just seeing more details where, uh, so a couple different plays of the day, Tyler Scott, long bomb, 30-yard completion from Caleb Williams to Tyler Scott. Nice to see Tyler Scott getting more involved. But also, Mark Carman of CHGO also mentioned that he saw the ball being spread around a little bit more, which he did not see with the other quarterbacks out there. But also just scouring the web, you hear that Keenan Allen was getting found multiple times in 11 on 11s. And also Caleb was quote quick and decisive in seven on sevens. And I believe that that was NBC sports Chicago where I pulled that quote from yet again, it's all good things that we're hearing about Caleb Williams. Good steps forward. Yes, interception, but still good steps forward all around with Caleb Williams. This is what we want to see and just continue to get better and better and better with Caleb Williams. But I will say this. I did hear that there is a decent amount of dump offs. Like I kind of heard just random people like as they're talking about it, that sounds like there's some dump offs. But yet again, they can't go too much into what this looks like. But it does sound like he's getting the ball out to multiple people, all good things. So now let's go to number four. And like we said, even though that Caleb Williams has been looking good, the defense is ahead. The defense is still our bread and butter. It's still what this team is about. And also just normal teams as well. The defense will be ahead of the offense, but it's, it's awesome to see this defense just playing with swagger. Nicholas Moriano reported that, I believe it was the first play, you saw Brisker break on the ball and just break up break up the pass and make an absolutely huge play and just showed a lot of speed out there. Just it's nice to hear secondary just continues to look good, continues to impress out there. Um, but yeah, you see Caleb Williams trying to fit in a pass, but Tyreek Stevenson ultimately jumping the route and making a good play. So overall, Defense still ahead of the offense. Defense still looking good, still making plays. And last but not least, we actually have to talk about the punt returners. 
for the first ever stock down on someone. Yes, that's right. We have a stock down, and that's Bayless Jones. Why is Bayless Jones' stock down? Well, it was reported that multiple people are starting to return punts. And yet again, this might just be, hey, they're testing out a drill, and they just want everybody out there returning punts. But Tyreek Stevenson was fielding some punts. Roma Dunze was fielding punts. A lot of people were re- were trying to return punts. Now, does this mean Tyreek Stevenson's going to be a punt returner? No, most likely not. Um, but ultimately, it just is a bad look for Velas because you would want to be the guy if you are the special teams guy. It just adds to that whole factor of do they actually trust him? Do can they actually trust him? And a lot of us. The answer is no. So ultimately, just we'll see what they end up doing with punt returns because you expect that there's a lot of talk from special teams people that you might want a larger player at the kick return spot. Bayless is a larger wide receiver. Like he has meat on the bone, so he could still be that kick returner. But it's just not a good look that a bunch of other people are returning punts. Yet again, there's no context on if it was a drill that everyone's returning or not. It's just that's kind of the hard part of this whole uh, this reporting type of piece where you just hear things, you read things, and then you just have to report it out. But if you like this content and you want to keep up to date on all the things that are going on at training camp, make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube. Also, you can download the podcast everywhere you get your podcast. Just search for Unbearable Sports. Drop a like. Helps out tremendously. And with that, Unbearable Sports Podcast, we are out. Yeah, she's got some nice long hair and you notice she's a brand.